The group may begin as a collection of strangers, but uncertainty gives way to cohesion as members become bound to their group by strong social forces. Cohesion, though, is not just group unity or the friendliness of members, but a multifaceted process that influences a wide range of interpersonal and intergroup processes. As cohesion and commitment ebb and flow with time, the group's influence over its members rises and falls. First, let us ask, what is group cohesion? Group cohesion is the strength of the bonds linking members to a group. Cohesiveness is an indication of the health of the group and is related to a variety of other group processes. Theories have debated the nature of this construct, but a multi-component, multi-level approach assumes cohesion as a variety of indicators including social cohesion. Levin and Pistinger, taking a social psychological approach to cohesion, emphasize the impact of attraction in both individuals and groups on cohesion. Hogg's concept of social attraction stresses a specific form of group level attraction based on social identity processes, task cohesion. The strength of groups focus on a task and the degree of teamwork displayed by group members as they coordinate their efforts and the group's level of collective efficacy. Perceived cohesion, the extent to which the group members feel as though they belong in the group, individual level, and overall entitativity of the group or group level. Emotional cohesion, the affective intensity of the group, often described as Elan moral, esprit de corps, or a positive affective tone. Group level consensual emotions are distinct from individual level emotions. Next, let us ask, why do some groups but not others become cohesive? A number of factors combine to determine a group's level of cohesiveness including attraction. According to Sheriff and Sheriff, using a unique field study method in Boys Summer Camp found that same sorts of variables that influence liking and group formation also influence the cohesiveness of the group that is formed. Stability, size, and structure as defined by Ziller, open groups display less cohesion than close groups. Smaller groups tend to be more cohesive than larger groups, as do groups with particular structural features, such as the absence of the groups, less hierarchy, and the like. Initiations, according to Festinger's theory of cognitive dissonance, explains why initiations can increase commitment to a group. Aronson and Mills confirmed that people who go through some kind of initiation to join a group tend to like that group more. However, when an initiation is severe such as some extreme hazing practices, it does not increase cohesiveness. Researchers have developed a number of operational definitions of cohesion using observation, structured observation, and self-report methods. Cohesion as a multi-level concept can also be measured at multiple levels. Next, let us ask, how does cohesion develop over time? Cohesion is, in most cases, the consequence of period of group development, a pattern of growth and change beginning with initial formation and ending in most cases with the solution. As Hill notes, many theories have been developed to explain group development. Most, however, are consistent with Tachman's five-stage model, orientation, forming stage. Members experience tentative interactions, tensions, concern over ambiguity, growing interdependence, and attempts to identify the nature of the situation. Next, conflict, storming stage. Members express dissatisfaction with the group, respond emotionally, criticize one another, and form coalitions. Next, a structural norming stage. Unity increases membership, stabilizes members. Members report increased satisfaction and the group's internal dynamics intensify. Next, work performance stage. The group's focus shifts to the performance of the task and goal attainment. Not all groups reach this stage, or even highly cohesive groups are not necessarily productive. And lastly, the solution adjoining stage. The group disbonds. A group's entry into the solution stage can be either planned or spontaneous, but even planned dissolution can create problems for members as they grow to reduce their dependence on the group. Tachman's model is a successive stage theory. It specifies the usual order of the phases of the group development. Cyclical models such as Bill's equilibrium model 
maintain the growth cycle through various stages repeatedly. The punctuated equilibrium model suggests that groups sometimes move through periods of accelerated change. Let us ask, what are the positive and negative consequences of cohesion? In most instances, cohesion is associated with increases in member satisfaction and decreases in turnover and stress. Roy's analysis of banana time in work groups illustrates how groups maintain cohesiveness through ritual and social interaction. Cohesion intensifies group process. Cohesive groups can be so psychologically demanding that they cause emotional problems for members such as the old sergeant syndrome. Dependence, pressure to conform, and acceptance of influence are greater in cohesiveness and acceptance of influence are greater in cohesive groups and can result in the mistaken decisions identified by Janice in his theory of group think. Cohesion and performance are linked both because success increases a group's cohesion and because cohesive groups tend to outperform less cohesive groups. Meta-analytic studies by Mullen, Copper, and other researchers suggest that each component of cohesion contributes to task proficiency. Even though cohesive groups tend to outperform less cohesive groups, this relationship is strongest when members are committed to the group's task. If the group norms do not encourage high productivity, then cohesiveness and productivity are negatively related.